In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, once again, welcome to this table. The table of God's Word, the table of God's love, the table of the Eucharist. On this second Sunday of Easter, also known as the Divine Mercy Sunday. We continue to turn in prayer to our Heavenly Father as Jesus continues to intercede for us at his right hand, as we continue our journey of prayer with our Blessed Mother and the Saints and with our brothers and sisters, not physically present here, but very much united in love and in prayer. And of course, we continue to ask God to bless, our God to bless uh, those who are going through uh, difficulties throughout the world, and that's in some way all of us, uh, but some in a very particular way. We continue to pray for those who've been personally affected by the um, virus. Uh, we continue to pray for those who put their life at risk, the frontline workers, uh, doctors and nurses and pharmacists, uh, volunteers, people that work in the different areas that um, uh, sustain us. And so we pray for everyone, we pray for ourselves. We pray for God's love to touch um, our world with his peace. And like every Mass, we begin by acknowledging the mercy of God, and we ask God to forgive us our sins. In questa seconda domenica di Pasqua, la domenica della Divina Misericordia, vogliamo rivolgerci come comunità di fede, anche se non presente fisicamente, ma uniti nell'amore, uniti nella fede, uniti nella carità. Vogliamo rivolgere la nostra preghiera a Dio nostro Padre per tutti coloro che in questo periodo, in questo tempo, soffrono la realtà del virus, per coloro che si impegnano ad aiutare, ad assistere, specialmente i medici, gli infermieri, i farmacisti, i volontari, tutti coloro che lavorano per il bene di tutti. E riconoscendo anche i nostri peccati, vogliamo pregare il Signore affinché ci benedica, ci sostenga e ci perdoni. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christe eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord Most High, Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. 
awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread in various houses and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dalla prima lettera di San Pietro Apostolo. Sia benedetto Dio e Padre del Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, che nella sua grande misericordia ci ha rigenerati, mediante la risurrezione di Gesù Cristo dai morti, per una speranza viva, per un'eredità che non si corrompe, non si macchia e non marcisce. Essa è conservata nei cieli per voi, che dalla potenza di Dio siete custoditi, mediante la fede, in vista della salvezza che sta per essere rivelata nell'ultimo tempo. Perciò siete ricolmi di gioia, anche se ora dovete essere per un po' di tempo afflitti da varie prove, affinché la vostra fede, messa alla prova, molto più preziosa dell'oro, destinato a perire e tuttavia purificato con fuoco, torni a vostra lode, gloria e onore quando Gesù Cristo si manifesterà. 
Voi lo amate, pur senza averlo visto, e ora, senza vederlo, credete in Lui. Perciò esultate di gioia, indicibile e gloriosa, mentre raggiungete la meta della vostra fede, la salvezza delle anime. Parola di Dio. Vediamo grazie a Dio. From the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen Cristo è risorto. And a few friends have called during this past week and they have remembered the Greek expression Christos Anesti. Alitos Anesti. Yes, indeed. Christ is risen. This past Thursday was the birthday of my youngest brother. And um, Tom. Uh, was born when I was in grade 12. And I remember when some of my classmates heard that I had a new baby brother, they asked, what's his name? What name have your parents given him? And I said, Tom. And I remember Lucia, one of our classmates, who said, Doubting Thomas? It's unfortunate that Tom, or Thomas, the apostle, has always been known as the one who doubted. He wasn't the only one, by the way. But <clears throat> this gospel story, which is a powerful story, we talked about it even last Sunday when we mentioned the locked doors of the upper room, like the locked doors in our homes, in our churches. And yet, in spite of those doors being locked, Christ comes through them. And I remember distinctly, it was about 12 years ago, that I read a beautiful explanation. I remember preaching it at that time. I may have mentioned it again over the years as why, what could be one of the reasons that Thomas doubted? And this particular reflection centered on the locked doors. I remember clearly reading that when Jesus came to them the first time, he came through the locked doors. The community experienced, the disciples experienced, celebrated his presence. And then the week later, when Thomas was with them this time, the doors were still locked. And a beautiful reflection saying, could it be possible that Thomas did not believe simply because he saw no change in how the rest of the disciples lived and carried on their life. The doors that were locked continued to be a sign that nothing had changed. And for Thomas, according to that particular writer, that could have been the reason. Why could I believe? Why should I believe when nothing has changed in you? Now, over these 12 years that have passed since that first reflection, I kind of asked myself as well, over the years, what can I claim has changed in me? If I changed in any way? If I continue as a human being, a Christian, a priest, continue to celebrate the mysteries, continue to proclaim the word of God in my day-to-day life, in my ministry, in my relationship with others, is there been any change? And we can ask ourselves the same questions and meditate on what's happening right now in our world. How can the events that we're all experiencing affect our life? Will there be any change? Will there be any growth? Will we be able to understand a bit more who we are how God wants us to relate to one another. We are being fed these days with beautiful reflections, beautiful thoughts. If we listen to the words of our Cardinal in his daily mass, in his daily message, if we listen to the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in the reflection he gives every day from um, 
Casa Santa Marta at the Daily Mass, are, they, are these realities touching our lives? We can turn on the television or any of the social media, listen to what's happening everywhere in the world. How is it affecting us? Will the doors of our life and of our heart continue to be blocked, continue to be closed, continue to be locked? So we pray that the presence of the risen Lord may actually break through whatever in our heart has been locked and allow new life to begin. And so Jesus is asking us in the gospel today to reach out to him. Where are his wounds? He's asking us to put our finger in the wounds of his hands, in his side. Where do we see that today? I think if we hear statistics of how many people have been affected by the virus, how many have died, the difficulties that people are encountering in being let go of their work, in the socioeconomic realities that we will be facing, well, the wounds of Christ are there. And, but with the wounds comes his presence. And so we pray that the mercy of God that we celebrate today, the divine mercy, will always be felt in our life and that through us, others will also benefit from the love of God. Together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. On this day of the Divine Mercy Sunday, we present now our prayer in the um, Consecration Act to the Divine Mercy. God, merciful Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have revealed your love and poured it out upon us in the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. We entrust to you today the destiny of the world and of every man and woman. Bend down to us sinners, heal our weakness, conquer all evil, and grant that all the peoples of the earth may experience your mercy. In you, the triune God, may they ever find the source of hope. Eternal Father, by the passion and resurrection of your Son, have mercy on us and upon the whole world. Amen. Dio Padre misericordioso, che hai rivelato il tuo amore nel Figlio tuo Gesù Cristo e l'hai riversato su di noi nello Spirito Santo Consolatore. Ti affidiamo oggi i destini del mondo e di ogni uomo. Chinati su di noi peccatori, risana la nostra debolezza, sconfiggi ogni male. Fa che tutti gli abitanti della terra sperimentino la tua misericordia, affinché in te Dio uno e trino trovino sempre la fonte della speranza. Eterno Padre, per la dolorosa passione e la resurrezione del tuo Figlio, Abi misericordia di noi e nel mondo interno. Amen.
Pregate, fratelli e sorelle, perché il nostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio Padre Onnipotente. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, proclaim together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Lord, 
whom you have called from this world to yourself. I received a number of phone calls this week reporting death of loved ones and asking if we could pray for them at Mass. So to all of you who called, who sent messages, and so many others that we do not know, we now remember your loved ones as we pause for a moment to give thanks to God for the gift of their life to us as they now return to the home of the Father. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Patrick, with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As brothers and sisters of Christ, children of the Father, with Jesus we now turn to our Heavenly Father in the prayer our Savior taught us. I would like to pray the Our Father today in Latin. All of you who know it in Latin, please join in or simply join in whatever language you wish. Il Padre Nostro oggi sarà recitato in Latino. Se conoscete le parole in Latino, Potete unirvi a noi in preghiera oppure in qualsiasi lingua volete pregare. Uniamo tutte le lingue in una sola realtà, la lingua dell'amore. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odiei et dimitte nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Beati gli invitati alla cena del Signore. Ecco l'agnello di Dio che toglie i peccati del mondo. O oh, Signore, non so di partecipare alla tua messa, ma di soltanto la parola e di non sarò salvato. Those who are not able to receive Holy Communion sacramentally now can receive Holy Communion spiritually. Please repeat the words of this prayer with me. My Jesus, My Jesus I, believe that you are truly present I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. The most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, I love you above all things. and I desire to receive you Within my, soul. within my soul. Since I cannot now, Since I cannot now receive, you receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually, come at least spiritually into, my heart. into my heart. I embrace you, I embrace you. As, though you were there. as though you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit, me Never permit me to be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Gesù mio, credo che voi siete nel Santissimo Sacramento. Vi amo sopra ogni cosa e vi desidero nell'anima mia. Già che ora non posso ricevervi sacramentalmente, venite almeno spiritualmente nel mio cuore. Come già avvenuto, io vi abbraccio e tutto mi unisco a voi. Non permettete che io mi abbia mai a separare da voi. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of our celebration on this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us turn our gaze and our prayer to the Mother of Mercy. As I look at the closed doors of our church and every church, I call to mind the year when those doors were open wide, the year of mercy, as these were among the other doors in the Archdiocese and worldwide to welcome pilgrims. And may the doors of faith continue to be open for us continue to welcome us and may the intercession of our Blessed Mother always protect and nurture everyone who turns to her in love. Regina Celi Letare Alleluia Quia Quem Eruisti Portare Alleluia Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. 
Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Prega per noi, Santa Madre di Dio, e saremo fatti degni delle promesse di Cristo. Dear friends, before the final blessing, thank you for joining us and for shedding, sharing, bringing the message of the Eucharist everywhere. It's what disciples did then and what we do today. I would like to thank so many that, um, after having prayed with us at Mass, have passed on, forwarded the link to so many others. Uh, so che la messa che celebriamo qui in questa chiesa è arrivata non solo qui in varie case, in varie famiglie, ma è arrivata anche in Italia e anche in Svizzera. Ho sentito che hanno telefonato e ringraziato, perciò ringraziamo coloro che le hanno, hanno condiviso uh, la Santa Messa con parenti e amici. Also, you know that, as I mentioned last week, that on Holy Thursday and Good Friday, uh, there was a procession in a car guided by, driven by a friend of mine, and keeping the uh, needed distance, physical distance. And we journeyed through some of the streets of our parish one night and other streets the other night, on Holy Thursday carrying the Blessed Sacrament, and on Good Friday carrying the crucifix. That procession will continue beginning Saturday night, last night, and every Saturday of the Easter season and the month of May. Saturday is the day of Mary, because she was the one who kept the faith burning brightly. When everybody else had lost it, from the cross on Friday until the empty tomb on Sunday, that Saturday was Mary's day. She kept the faith burning brightly in her heart. She never wavered in that faith. And so the sun, Saturdays of um, Easter and uh, May, uh, the same procession will take place, carrying this beautiful icon of Our Lady of Kazan through the streets of our parish, blessing not only the parish, but the world, people around the community, people everywhere. And may the strength of Mary continue to be in our heart and in our lives. Also, beginning this week, we will be doing more work with our young people. So both through the, um, uh, the young students in the EDGE group, which is grade five to grade eight, and the live teen, high school, young adults, and now we're also gonna be working with the little children who are part of our uh, Liturgy of the Word for Children on Sunday and others. So letters will be sent. We do have connection with those uh, people who've been part of the EDGE and life team, but we're gonna be asking parents who wish to be connected, connecting their children at home with some of the activities, some of the prayers, some of the discussion, to please forward your email to the parish, uh, on the parish email, and um, also say the name of your child, what age group he or she is in, so that they can be placed with the right group. And I believe so much more, please keep on praying. Keep on praying for those who need our prayers and for all of us. Um, I ask you whenever you need, or you may need anything, please call the church. If I'm not there to answer the phone, please leave a message and I will be answering as soon as possible. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and glorify the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.